Fiction, and welcome to another episode of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. As always, this podcast is made possible by our local convenience stores, the misappropriation of history, and you. And now to your hosts, Justin Hammonds, Brant Bramlett, and Drew Shellnut. What's up? What's happening, world? This is a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Oh. Oh. And this is Grant Bramlett doing a pretty piss poor Justin Hammond's impression. No, I mean it's not that bad. It's not just good. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah, this is good. And uh, unfortunately, he will not be joining us because Sad. that fucking jerk decided to go to Atlanta to see a J. Cole concert oh, with oh, his fun. girlfriend. Oh yeah, going steady. Yeah, they're like official now. It's adorable. Steady time. Steady. <laughs> <laughs> called that one. Mm-hmm. Actually, mm-hmm. I had a really weird um, situation where... Oh, and I'm Drew Shellnut, by the way. Oh, hi, Drew. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, that's right. I'm supposed to keep uh, introducing yeah, right? people. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm joined, parts of the job. And I'm joined here today with uh, <laughs> my good friend and cohort, Drew Shellnut. Oh, hi, Drew. Yeah, what's yeah. up? And uh, for the first time ever in the actual recording booth, we have our engineer... Jeremy Mulder. Howdy. The fun guy that does the intro thing. Yep, yep, yep. Y'all, y'all hear me at the at the beginning and at the end of all these podcasts, but now I'm here in the middle, <laughs> in the great expanse, Stuck the in wide the open. With you. And he also does not talk like that in real life. I don't know what's happening right now. I'm sorry, talking like what? <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me what I'm doing wrong. Right. I don't want to ruin it. Help me. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say, Drew? I forgot. Okay, cool. Jeremy, I wanted to kick things off. I thought this would be kind of funny. By the way, everybody, this is just a tweener, as we called them last time, because we finished up our season on psychology, and we're going to be more of a um, fun, random topics and for to be clear, season tw- four. Tweener mm-hmm. is short for between, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 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 To signify that it's between the seasons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Understood. Yeah, you, you yeah. get it. So if I get it... There's a chance they might get it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just wants to be clear. Yeah, we have to be crystal clear, especially for the engineer. Hey. Well, this one might be kind of cool because uh, <sighs> all three of us are going to pick six different topics and we're going to mm-hmm. trade off per week. Theoretically, the other two won't know much about it, so it'll be yeah. kind of a fun, you know, lifetime reactions on these uh, crazy topics mm-hmm. that we're going to do. So I think it'll be kind of neat. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Anyways, mm-hmm. tweener. Number one, go. Jeremy, I wanted to start off with some of the annoying things that we do <laughs> in the studio <laughs> that you either edit out or have to fucking deal with. Oh, I feel like that'd no. be kind of hilarious. Okay, okay. So as far as things that I have to deal with, well, first off, there's a lot less nowadays than you know when we first started this thing. At baby the steps, beginning. baby. Yeah, everybody's been progressing and evolving and learning as it goes on. It's gotten a lot better. Um, but it's just the normal things, the, the stuff that, you know, the listener will do on a, you know, a daily basis but not really be thinking about. Um, y'all are in a performative space, so these are things that all the small things that are kind of get looked over in a normal setting are far more exaggerated Mm-hmm. When you're sitting behind the mic, you know. Mm-hmm. So, whether it be kind of, you know, tapping the table, you know, putting the the glasses down, that kind of thing. Oh man, you just annoyed yourself. You know, so or much. <laughs> oh, I'm, leaving, I'm obviously leaving all this in because it's examples of it. Or it's you know just kind of the the changing of where you are relative to the microphone as you're talking because you know you kind of get behind it because you're readjusting yourself or mm-hmm. something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, or um. Uh, um, um, you know, just kind of the filler spaces that we naturally put into our conversation. Mm-hmm. Fillers. So, yeah. Ums, yes. things like that. Those I, don't, the- I don't get as many ums because I quit smoking pot before we started <laughs> recording. <laughs> Nice. So, I mean, oh, honestly, that's, that's that why was, you got so much better so quick. That yeah, is, because okay. I was just like, yeah, I can't smoke before. But Carolyn would be like, smoke. And I'd be like, you go ahead, baby. I got a podcast. To do. I've got to go do this podcast. And then, <laughs> mind you, when I get back, I will st- smoke thou weed. But it is an interesting thing as far as just people go in generational 
type stuff of what that filler is because we're all coming up with stuff on the fly as we talk. Mm -hmm. Um, Like just now I'm saying um, we have to be conscious of it. And it's something that's very hard to train ourselves to do the latest generation. Well, our generation too, but the latest generation, the hugest thing that they have going on is like, Mm -hmm. like is one of those Mm -hmm. things, you know, when you're talking about it, it's just like, and then it's like, it's like it's just Dude, very I difficult for people to get over and hate through. it so much when people overuse it. And just like my southern accent, I tried real hard to ditch it, you know, with with different accents and dialects. There's a happy medium that is professionalism. Right. And trying to find that and still tra- stay true to yourself is a big thing. Uh, we don't need to lose where we came from. We just don't need to be hampered or brought down by uh, the stuff that, uh, I don't know, pinpoints us, you know, down to where we came from. Yeah. I've kind of put a thought into it in that when, so when I was uh, uh, building out the lounge, the the bar that Justin and I are at over the the lockdown, we did a whole bunch of construction, of course, as I think most people would know now, but I, uh, when we would get to something and be like, is this good enough? And then I finally got to the point of being like, yeah. uh, <laughs> if it looks like we did it on purpose, then that's good enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where somebody yeah. looks at something and says, hey, it could have been done a little better, but that's clearly intentional. So, okay, cool. And I kind of feel like that works with speech patterns and presenting yourself in such a way, you know, where if you show up clearly haven't showered, haven't touched your hair, you're wearing sweatpants, whatever it may be, in certain public settings, that is insanely unprofessional because they didn't try. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like they did that on purpose. It right, makes it right. seem like they you don't care. I mean? Yeah. And yeah, if somebody has a, an insanely mm-hmm. thick, like regional accent you Mm -hmm. know like if you have a crazy crazy southern accent and you're in a certain setting say a podcast or a television broadcaster it makes it seem like they don't care they're not doing anything on purpose to make themselves a little more understandable you know what i mean yeah i'm wondering if that applies on the fly theory yeah and some of it right (laughs) some of it comes down to not so much the accent but the spoken grammar, you know, mm-hmm. that's something that does it for me, at least in a prof- if we're talking about being professional, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. De- depending on how we form our speech and the words that we decide that we want to include, some things are better in a locker room or a very closed group that we don't want people to hear. Mm-hmm. Certain things are okay to say at a valedictorian speech. There is right. a wide gamut of the things we choose to say but most importantly the way and it doesn't really come down to accent accent alone is just kind of where you're from Mm -hmm. now a southern drawl can definitely become very difficult to understand when it's super drawn Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. yeah Um, like those swamp people but the same (laughs) way uh, a bostonian accent or a minnesotan (laughs) what I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, that actually reminds me. There was a guy, <laughs> it was that moment of like, I swear this guy's trying to talk to me. I just know it. Kind of a moment. Um, it was a, like a prog, like hard rock kind of prog group that I was in with uh, my buddy Gaines, who was on our little party episode recently. We were playing in New Jersey, and a guy came up to us after the show. I'm pretty sure he was telling us that he liked the music mm-hmm. and that we did a good job as a rock and roll band. Yeah. And I think he was asking me how long we're going to be in New Jersey. And that's all I got. We talked to him for like 20 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, what? What's happening right now? You know, and I, and I eventually, so you're from New Jersey? And he was like, oh, yeah, I've been here forever. But I, again, I can't do his accent or no. whatever the hell was going on no, with this yeah. guy at all. And I was talking about it to somebody else from New Jersey. And I was like, yeah, yeah, there's some of those guys here. And I'm like, where did this come from? Like, how is this part of New Jersey? I don't know. It's just. <laughs> 
accents are weird, man. Well, I had a, uh, and I think I've touched on this before in one of our episodes, but I had an English teacher that I asked her. I was like, a British woman as a teacher? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yes, great. She was English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> English. <laughs> yeah. yeah, boy, mate. It's not mine. But anyway. <laughs> I swear, it's not it's, mine. There are no dingoes to eat the babies here. <laughs> this is that a real, That's a real issue, lady. <laughs> but anyway. That poor woman lost her child. Um, I had AP European, uh, or AP, not European, that was my history class, AP English with her, and I was like, look, I've struggled with a really bad Southern accent my entire life, and I know it makes me sound fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Can you please help me out? Because... I heard that you were from like a county away and a county away in Tuscaloosa is a big deal. Probably worse than what I sound like in Tuscaloosa, except for if you move towards the Jefferson area. (laughs) But she said, well, what I did for about a year and a half is I listened to Midwest news anchors Mm -hmm. and just tried to mimic that and their articulation because it's the most plain accent in America. I was like, oh, well, shit. And I started doing it. Now it doesn't sound like I've been doing it very long, but I did it for a while and was, oh, yeah, it's articulate. Mm -hmm." And and, and it wasn't like a a proper or whatever, but it was very plain to to the point where people would be like, oh, and I just moved to a new school. So they'd be like, oh, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, Philadelphia. And they're like, oh, how is it up there? And I'm like, (laughs) I literally came from a worse place than here. Yeah. But trained my voice against that. It's it's funny you bring up. I mean, you news. sound like you're from the south, but that you've oh, yeah. read a book or two. To me, <laughs> right, you know, and I feel similarly about myself. <laughs> but I do have people that are from the south mm. and have no clue that I'm from the south. Yeah, and yeah. then I talk to someone from the north, and they just can't place me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's interesting that you brought up news anchors and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's because they they all do kind of sound very similar. There's there's definitely certain ones. In certain parts of the country, <laughs> uh, definitely Texas and Oklahoma, there's uh, compilations, you know, of small town news anchors and mm-hmm. that kind of thing where they own it. Yeah. They they put it in there for sure, but it's still just the accent. They're still coming yeah. across as professional, and that can, kind of harkens back to what I was saying about the the grammar of it. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. You know, if you take something that, was, that sounds professional – uh, from a different part of the, the country, and it's just text. It's just it's just coming off the teleprompter, and they're reading it. And you give it to somebody who's from the Deep South and has a very – it's still going to come across as professional because it's the way it was composed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the accent doesn't have anything to do with the education. And which, what is kind of crazy from the South, and they're always saying, those darn Northerners, they they think we sound stupid and that we're right. all stupid. And like, no, that's that's – not it. There is definitely a difference between the southern drawl and the very fast-paced New York, you know, kind of thing going on. Yeah. But it's it's not what you're saying, you know, or rather, it's not how you're saying. It. It's not the accent that's the issue. It's the. It's, I mean, it's it's the content. It's how it's mm-hmm. literally put together. Some of the vernacular and the mm-hmm. the jargon itself uh, is not. Uh, it kind of points straight to okay, we're. We're, we're casual doing, right yeah, now. Yeah, we're doing something we're not very, as learned very as casual. we need to be right now <laughs> with the talking. And I don't trust this person. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't want to misquote it. And I might try and find it a little later on, but I was, it was like a psychological, uh, basically an op ed, I feel like. There was, was a study done on how people perceive others with different accents, you know, and the like uh, proper British accent. Is seen as one of the most the king's elevated, English. you know the what I mean? English. Like people inherently <laughs> trust someone with that type of accent as providing them with accurate information. Mm-hmm. And the southeastern American accents, pretty low on the totem pole. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> because it's associated with... Globally, you know, yeah. it's really interesting. Because you're not getting the southern English professor who uses perfect grammar but mm-hmm. still has that draw... That's not what people are hearing most yeah, of the time. They're like, hearing the over-the-top, just ignorant version. They're getting the worst examples of it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's not possible. It's just that that's not what they're associated right. with. You know, the 
the the British you know, King's English version. We're talking about David Attenborough here, right? Oh yeah, you know, it's, straight up. Yeah, it's, we're associating different uh, things with it. Also, before I forget, a uh, very interesting thing. Uh, think about twenties to fifties, not television, but movies mm-hmm. and the accents. Mm-hmm. That was called the transatlantic mm-hmm. accent. Yeah. It's not a real accent. No, yeah, it's no. fake. Yeah, yeah. They came up with it. Yeah. That's you, they crazy. had to learn the transatlantic. A world for tomorrow. <laughs> for today. Yes. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't real. They had to come up with it. Yeah. Uh, and then put it into use for it to become a thing. And then what do you call it? It's the transatlantic. It works, you know, across the across Atlantic. Across the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah, that's, of course. That's what we're doing. I love it. Which Something to me, everybody. with all the research and all, all the stuff that we've done on the podcast, makes me think of go like, get them, boys. This Sorry. is a transatlantic <laughs> language sounding shit, right? We've got it going here. We got a newspaper over here, a little newspaper boy. He's running around. He done run into two damn poles. Transatlantic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what they sounded like. You yeah. Know, oh, yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember watching Breakfast Flappers. Tiffany's and everyone like sounded flapping like Flapping their stuff. And they're like, hey, baby, come on over here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All those Alfred Hitchcock movies that I, I grew up watching. Yeah, yeah. Not the birds. No. Them goddamn things is everywhere, shitting on everything. You Mama's sound, car can't clean her windshield for shit. You sound just like Sean Connery in the James Bond films. I, thank you. I've been working on that for like five years. <laughs> <sighs> Man, validation. Oh, actually, this provides a really good segue into a story I wanted to tell. So, Grace and I went to a local Mexican restaurant, and they put us in a little back booth. Hang on. Shout out to Mexican food. It's awesome. I love it so much. Yeah, It's true. He it's does. It's so good. Yeah. You should try it sometime. It's really good. If you haven't had it before. Tacos. Yeah. They're really popular. I hope you have had one before. But anyways. Um, they go really good on Tuesdays. So, there's this old couple that gets sat caddy corner from the booth i have an excellent view of them grace has their back to him man is wearing a white fedora a um tommy bahama style like hawaiian shirt cargo pants with the cargo pockets full they were bulging they were, dots. i mean it made me think about that actually and flip-flops oh so meth and he's a probably from florida huge wonderful Alfred Brimley mustache, right? Uh, Big, bushy, white mustache. It was beautiful. He was like modern-day Sylvester Stallone with a southern accent. With me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and a little bit of Drew in there. But mostly just like Drew's resonance frequency of Mm -hmm. speaking voice. Very loud. Yeah, very loud, very deep. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I get you. (laughs) And the way he was talking was... Every important word in the sentence that he had was buried. It was just mush mouthed, you know. And then the important words, I mean, the not important words, sorry, the articles of the sentence, if mm-hmm. you will. And any of these uh, words that we like to use unintentionally, Jeremy, like we were talking about, words like like or um or you know, were projected across yeah. the entirety of the Mexican restaurant. So I was like, down to the factory the other day. And, you know, and, uh, you know, like uh, that was the whole time. Uh, They each had uh, three jumbo margaritas within like 15, 20 minutes. Like you should. Like you should. His wife got uh, chicken wings, which (laughs) I didn't didn't see chicken wings on the menu. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. And like, they, they knew the staff. Like yeah. the, the manager came over and chatted with them for a second. Wait, so was they, was they this are, at our favorite? No, no, no. Okay. It's one that we, we you and I have been to before once. Oh, and, I remember which one it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's fine. It's it's a fine place. There's nothing uh, spectacular about right it. Right beside three volcanoes. Yeah, but it yeah, wouldn't yeah, yeah. be the one I would go to mm. every week. Right, you know? right, right. No, we found that place. And Oh, yeah, I love Through that place. great... Trials and tribulations we have gone through <laughs> all of the Mexican restaurants in this area of Nashville, and we have found the one. By the uh, way, I've brought up uh, Five Agaves to some people That's before, the name of the restaurant. But and if they know about Five Agaves, they're like, oh, yeah, I fucking love that and place. I have, <laughs> and I have a contrasting story to all of that. I've, I found one person, too, this weekend. I was uh, I was shouting out because that's what I do. You know, I, I have to talk about Five Agaves. I want you them yell to, about I quality Mexican food. I need them to stay in food. business. You yeah. know, I, I, mm-hmm. I know that they n- have no issues of it, but... There's that deep fear inside <laughs> that we'll suddenly lose this place. Don't, don't go I, at nighttime. 
Yeah. Seriously. Carolyn and I went, stood there for 20 fucking minutes. They they walked by us. No, there were four tables available at 7 p.m. Four tables available. People sitting in, I mean, they were busy. They had three servers, but it was a, they would walk by and go, which for the listeners is a smile and nod, Mm -hmm. um, and just walk by us. And we were just like, we were kind of fucking hungry and see four (laughs) tables. And I've been raving about this place to Carolyn for like two months now. And she's just like, and, and, and she was just, and she, and she seriously goes, we're not coming back here. And I was like, what? And she goes, no, they fucked up. She goes, once you fuck up in my book, it's done. And I was like, you sound like me. Number one noted for the future, actually. Thank you for that bit of information. Yeah. Don't go at night. They have. Oh no, uh, I meant more so don't fuck up around Carolyn. (laughs) Got it. (laughs) Watch yourself. (laughs) No, but for real, I mean, and, and it was, I understand that mentality of like, if I walk in, I stand there for 15, and 20, 15 to 20 minutes. That's fine. I don't mind waiting 15, 20 minutes, even an hour at some restaurants. But a little but bit of communication. No communication on top yeah. of that is just like, come on, man. Yeah, that's true. We, we, we had two people that they served that were behind us that walked in. And we were like... Mm, so uh, apparently they're a pretty new place. So the people I told, they went there and they said it was not good, but it was right after it opened. Mm. And we have... They've definitely gotten to a point where the food is amazing. Yeah, food's great. But apparently, yeah, they're still working out the the service bit. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, When we've gone, it's been during lunch specials and that before they get bogged down. I've definitely driven by at night and that place is packed. Mm -hmm. So, Oh, yeah, down the street. It seems like a family that started a business and maybe... Working out some kinks, too. Yeah, maybe they're just working out the experience. Well, and last last year helped no one. Yeah. So. So anyways, back to... Bahama, um, Bahama boy, Bahama <laughs> Stallone. Get back to your story. He <laughs> he's going on. And seriously, for I don't know, twenty five, thirty minutes. I all I caught from him was, as far as like important nouns are concerned, factory and NPR. That's all I got out mm. of the guy. The rest of it was, you know, yeah, like. <laughs> um, so it was did, crazy. So did you create? Did you fill in all that sp- all the space in between those words? Did you come up with your own story there with Grace as to what they were actually talking about? No, I was way too distracted by how incredible this couple was. I, I could not focus well enough to create a good story f- for them or what this man potentially was telling his wife. Either way, third margarita comes around. He, I think he takes one sip out of it and then immediately just slams that motherfucker onto the table by accident. <laughs> You know the big, thick glass. Oh yeah, the fish bowl, fish yeah. bowl yeah. style. Got the little short stem, but the big, heavy, fat yeah. base mm-hmm. on it. I mean, the glass is thick on these fucking things. Yeah. Breaks it on a table, a wooden Mexican restaurant <laughs> table. And Wood's got some gift to it. That's know? impressive. It's forgiving alone. That's impressive. Oh, yeah. But my eye line could go underneath the table. And you know how uh, older booths, when you're sitting down, you, your butt sinks into the back mm-hmm. and will often be below your knees, mm-hmm. right? So if you're wearing pants that are baggy at all, there's a little... Basin. Fa- yeah, a, a basin, bowl. a fabric yeah. basin, a bowl, if you will. <laughs> well, that bowl created was basically enough to hold the entirety of his margarita <laughs> in his lap. <laughs> <laughs> so slams down on the thing. The entirety of the margarita pours straight into his lap and then just stays there. And he goes, well, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> and his wife starts cackling at him. And then he proceeds to sit there for like two minutes. You've got to absorb the alcohol. A long time he sits there. He took a bite <laughs> of his food. And then he eventually gets up to yell across the restaurant to someone to fetch him some towels to clean up the mess that he has made. And again, just, I I could not have framed this better if I had tried to, you know, make this a filmed comedy bit. Between his spread legs with his back facing me, I saw an ice cube that had stuck to the Pant, his pants and the thing just fall between his legs after he stands up. He stood up for a second and it's just like, so can I get some towels over here? We had a little accident. Her, her, her. Oh, and another margarita. I'm definitely going to need another margarita. Her, her. Plink goes the ice cube onto the ground in right between on his legs. It was so mm. great. 
So he wanders over to the bar. It's a big funny thing. Mm -hmm. A couple of servers come scurrying over to try and clean it up. His wife, no pause at all, just still having a nice meal. Mm-hmm. With her chicken. I mean, after 40 years, she's learned. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to eat my food. It's going to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> Come over, clean it up. Bartender hands him another margarita. At this point, he's standing in the aisle of the booth <laughs> and hands, it takes his keys out of his pocket and dangles them in front of his wife's face, like arms straight across the table. It says, you're going to need to drive her, 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 her. And he's dangling the keys in front of her face. She's still eating her chicken wings. And he's got the margarita hooked real That's close right, to his chest this time wings. around. Oh and it's dangling the keys, margarita hooked. Takes a little sip. And he's still dangling the keys. And I'm like, she's clearly not done. Sit back <laughs> down, man. You know, Get some to-go boxes. And then she starts singing this song about how tequila makes your clothes come off. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Because <laughs> he says he's going to need to take his pants off when he gets home <laughs> because they're covered in margarita. And now she's getting excited. <laughs> she's going, tequila makes your clothes come off. And he, so he starts dancing in the middle of the aisle, arm straight with the keys dangling in front of her face, margarita firmly hooked into his chest, just dancing. Wide, like knock-kneed, wide stance. Was he just jingling the keys jingling in Jingling in yes. time okay, to it. Perfect. Just swaying, bobbing back and, and forth. And so you're sure that wasn't me and Carolyn? <laughs> in 30 years, I'm positive it is. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but the whole time... I'm having to pretend like there's funny shit going on on my phone because <laughs> he keeps looking at me like the eyes dart over constantly at me. And I don't know if he's challenging me. I don't know if it's like, yeah, laugh right now mm-hmm. in the I don't Maybe he wanted me a part of the joke of it all or maybe he would have gotten angry. Yeah. But they finally left and I laughed for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> and it's like that a lot. I wanted to share. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Drew, you talked about having some articles pulled up for our yeah, little Yeah, I've got three. Boy. I only think I'm going to hit two. But um, this is from theguardian.com, and it is an article by, we'll tell you later. <laughs> the title is River Otter Attacks Baffle, Attacks Baffle Authorities in Anchorage, Alaska. I like otters. Otters are cool. Apparently. <laughs> so, residents of Anchorage, Alaska <laughs> used to live alongside moose and bear, now face a threat from a more diminutive creature, the humble river otter. On Friday, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game alerted residents to pack an aggressive uh to, that a pack of aggressive otters which have attacked dogs, children, and adults near the creeks, rivers, and lakes. <laughs> it's, We're going to lose them. I read this on my morning poop, guys, nice. and it was great because it's like, it helped push it out So Ooh. for the laughter and my squatty potty. But anyway, shout out to squatty potty. Um, <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> Humans are river otters' only significant predator. Attacks the other way are not common, officials said. Nonetheless, a spate of reported incidents prompted the official warning. Quote, quote because of the risk of, uh, to public safety, efforts will be made to locate this group of river otters and remove them. Care will be taken to only remove animals that exhibit these unusual behaviors. So what happened? This isn't just a one case thing. Within the last couple of weeks, three different instances have happened. A lady got attacked by a river otter. Or, well, not, you can't say a river otter because it's a group of four every time for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it's guerrilla warfare. They're, they're, they're starting the revolution. Yeah, so last Apparently. week a, a, a woman was bit while, while rescuing her dog from otters at a lake. The same day in another part of the city, a group of otters attacked a dog. Earlier this month, a nine-year-old boy went to the emergency room after four otters chasing him and his friends while they were playing near a duck pond in An- East Anchorage. The boy's mo- uh, mother, Tiffany Fernandez, told the Anchorage Daily News, 
He has two fang marks on his back thigh Fangs. and one on the front of each of his legs and a puncture wound on his foot. These motherfuckers are out there for some many. That is crazy. So they're attacking children, small dogs, or any dogs, and women. No men have been attacked in this or whatever, but that's only so you're saying on, on the docket, at least. Not only are they violent, they're also bigots. Yes. Discriminatory. Yes, okay. yes. Got it. At least in, in Alaska. But the weird thing is... <laughs> there's... I don't know about the rest of the authors, <laughs> but these Alaskan... <laughs> well, and I did... The only one close to that was in... Uh, Florida, so that's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, Sunscreen and skin cancer. <laughs> but coconut oil. The only thing <laughs> uh, smells like sweat and regret. Oh, God. Um, mm, yeah, it does. Uh, but anyway, state, yeah. the, they found uh, about a month ago. They found a an otter that had um, rabies about 150 miles away from Anchorage. Okay, but. It was only accessible through airplane. Mm-hmm. So um, much in Alaska is and it, right, and they were like, "It's kind of odd for them to." They usually don't travel that far away from their communities or anything like that. And this one was found with porcupine quills in them that had rabies. And porcupines and river otters are not friends. One's a land based, one's an aquatic based animal. They kind of stick to their regions. I have to assume they don't interact very often at all. No, it's not. Not hey, it's my buddy George, the uh, fucking porcupine over here. You right, know that doesn't right. happen very much. Yeah, no Sunday barbecues. No, no, no Sunday barbecues. <laughs> Unfortunately, different sides of the train tracks. <laughs> but so that's that's the weird thing that is kind of popping up. Is they're like, if this is rabies, where the fuck did it come from? Like, how did it get into these otters? And why are they traveling in packs, just attacking humans right now and small dogs? Yeah, that's awesome. And they're ju- they're just running around like these kids were just playing beside a duck pond, like. <laughs> and then, oh shit, fucking these big rats! And then they look back, and they're just like, <laughs> like just running. And just this one kid just fucked up and fell down. It's like the whole thing. Like if you're running from a bear, make sure you have a fat friend. So sacrifice right. this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know. So we lost Sur- one child. Survival to the auto revolution. <laughs> Small price to pay. Right. It's fine. It's fine. But it's literally, uh, the uh, the doctors did examinations. He had bites on both of the backs of his thighs, the fronts of his thighs, and one of his feet, and scratches all down his back, and one bite on the back of his right I mean, shoulder they went blade. After this kid, they just fucking jumped his ass. That's crazy. like he stole their fucking lunch money. They yeah. jumped his fucking ass. Like it was crazy. And then the other attacks were just a woman was trying to save her dog from being attacked by four otters. <laughs> it's always four. What the fuck is it's, up with the number? It's, just the like, mm-hmm. it's the unit. It's the unit. Now let's, let's remember it's a revolution. This is organized it's a revolution. Bitches. They've been, it, edu- <laughs> they've been educated. They've been trained <laughs> and they know that the best way to execute their guerrilla mm. warfare is in units of four. Yeah. And at least it's smallest. Mm-hmm. So they've, mm. they could now just to be clear <laughs> that it does break down into Two otters per fire team, mm-hmm. but that when they sense. first initiate, it's a unit of four. Yeah, that and it's usually, like it's, it. it's usually um, so it would be two couples, so husband and wife, mm-hmm. twice, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's a double date. Maybe yeah, that's, that, their, that's, idea that's their idea of a double date. Yeah, maybe so. Let's go fuck these uh, fuck these humans up real quick. <laughs> 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 I can't build anything well, or swim around all this fucking plastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, so they probably are, you know, they've been working all week. They've been doing their thing. Mm-hmm. They're overworked. Like, they just don't have, I mean, 2020, probably rough for the otters too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, so they're just getting back out. They've cracking got, muscles on I their mean, bellies. They've got yeah. loan, you know, payments uh, coming yeah. up. The yeah. mortgage forbearance is over. Like it's, it's coming back. And they've just finally gotten through this hellish work week over a hundred hours. Rolling and on they the finally bank, have yeah. one day that mm-hmm. they have reserved for their couple time. Place, you know, play any, you and they know, said, huh? you know what? Let's get together with our friends. What we ne- that we never see because they're working too. Yeah. Right. So yeah, now yeah. it's that double date. Yeah. And then these fucking kids <laughs> and these fucking dogs get in there, <laughs> and they start ruining their one damn opportunity a week. Yeah. And then the fangs come out. That's it. Okay. It's, 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 it's warranted. I think yeah. this is fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So maybe it's, <laughs> I'm still leaving it open for the revolution idea, <laughs> but if it's not that, it's definitely the double date thing. And they just snap sure. finally. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. 
Uh, Jeremy, how do you feel about us starting our lawn care company? That's called Otter Creek Lawn Care. I think it's great. I mean, they're the they're river dogs, and obviously very vicious. I mean, like there's there's just a lot there. You know? Yeah, it's a uh, it's not just like hey, it's a cow. I mean, yeah. cows are great. You know, I love cows, but it's just. It's just kind of one thing. Yeah. You know, there's not. Well, yeah, because we were thinking about having Brendan, you know, do a little uh, recurring cartoon or comic strip with an otter in it, you know, that yeah. like steals our lawnmower, sort of Marmaduke esque, yeah. you know. Uh, but I think I like the idea better of four otters attacking grass, <laughs> just running into somebody's yard and then coming just, back and it's like. <laughs> Lines just completely destroying <laughs> an old lady. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, like killing and murdering her. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like then the, we, this- ooh, ooh, we okay. chase them down with our lawnmowers. Oh, okay, this got brutal really quick. Yeah. Oh, nice. compost. Yeah, you, yeah. Y- y- y'all are familiar <laughs> with the uh, the old internet series Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it all starts nice and cute and everything, and it's bubbly and animated. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly everyone starts dying these gory, horrific deaths. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just make our comic strip like that. <laughs> you know, just I love it. What you know? else you got for us, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is from HuffPost.com, and this is by David Moy. And it's called Bronx Zoo Visitors Go Bananas Watching Gorillas Engaging in Oral Sex. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Also, great wordplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get it? Because monkeys like bananas. Hey. And wieners are like bananas. Yeah. Except for this one's the opposite. Right. Yeah. So this lady takes her um, <laughs> class of students to the New York City's Bronx Zoo. I think I really like this story. And they're walking around, and they're like, "Oh, look, old lady gorilla's laying down. It's about to ha- it's about to be a good time. She's just rolling around. Fun stuff's happening." Male gorilla walks up and just straight up face in the JJ starts mm. eating her out. Mm-hmm. Oh my! God. In front of all these kids and everything, and she's shaking. <laughs> Oh, so she's enjoying it. Like, oh, yeah, she's enjoying it. <laughs> and the kids who have cell phones are like, <laughs> and she's like, turn away, turn away. And they're like, what? what? This is supposed to be normal. And she walks up to one of the the, the zoo folk. That's a good husband right there. I'm, I'm happy yeah. for him. Oh, yeah, for sure. For, proud sure. Of him. for sure. You got to please have a JJ. Yeah, man. But uh, you got to preheat the oven. Yeah. You d- hey. Happy wife. You know? yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. callback. Call back to Shelly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> the listeners know. <laughs> the teacher walks up to one of the zoo workers and is like, uh, "Is this normal?" And she mm. and they're like, "Yeah, the, we we try to, you know, make sure that this happens mostly at night time, but we can't help nature." How how in the world would you encourage gorillas to reserve their by placing them in different areas? Why? Well, I guess that's like, fair, but I just like, can't. I can't imagine the sign language that would be involved with a gorilla in captivity saying, reserve giving head for nighttime. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, all right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> Night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and if you guys want to watch it. Um, <laughs> Damn, I'll, I'll Skippy, post a link. I'll I'll post a link and and it's on, it's TMZ as well. <laughs> you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's do it like they do on the TMZ <laughs> channel. Oh, ooh, ooh, oh. TMZ. But we yeah, right. so um, that that was that had to have been a hell of a fucking field trip, you know. I would have remembered that. I'm, I'm sorry. What was the average age of these children? What they do, were, we, do we know? I think they were third or fourth graders. Oh, okay. so it was. Oh yeah, half uh, of them knew what was going on. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so Drew showing us a picture now. Yeah, and she's yeah. loving it. Yeah, she, she she's actually <laughs> hands on the head of the male gorilla. <laughs> is she he on guiding his, him? Is he on his feet still? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. good for him. But ba 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 ba. She's the loving it. <laughs> Getting the leverage. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the 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 statement up above this that was a Twitter post I just showed you guys the picture of and, monkey lingus that's the best I can come up it was with. well I've been, I've been trying over here <laughs> monkey wheels. lingus monkey lingus that's the best I got well I mean yeah. this this one the the, okay. the, the tweet on this is well evolution is now officially settled science <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> I mean, we, we knew that they had sexual oh, yeah. activities just for pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Dolphins are the, the dolphins, uh, pigs bonobos. Are, pigs are ri- I'm pigs. Sorry, bonobos. Mm-hmm. So another monkey ape mm-hmm. like. Yeah. You know. The pigs have a 30 minute orgasm. That's true. Pigs which like is it. Actually, I don't think I'd like that too much. Mm-mm. I mean, I've I've tripped enough to where. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if somebody's like, I just need it to end, please. And uh, this yeah. is great, but I need it to come to an end. And then the next one is rare Pokemon Oreos are selling for thousands of dollars on eBay. So new Pokemon Oreos are giving fans something to get excited about and providing collectors with a new avenue to potentially rake in thousands of dollars. Dumb. Yep. Launched earlier this month, the Oreo X Pokemon collaboration features the brand's traditional sandwich cookies, this time emblazoned with one of 16 Pokemon or pocket monsters for the uninitiated. You said pocket monster? <laughs> yeah. I actually never Pokemon. knew that. Yeah. Okay. That's what Pokemon means. Yeah. I never knew that. I'm just saying that sounds like a euphemism. Yeah. For something else. For those gorillas. Yeah. Pocket monster. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It is her turn. That's all she to needed. Go down on his she didn't need monster. him. She just yeah. needed a pocket, pocket monster. monster. Fuck. Oh, a pocket monster could be like a, a vibrator. Rabbit. Yeah. yeah. I, I, my brain went to penis. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, the old, like, pocket pull, you know, that kind of thing. Trouser snake, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's pocket monster. Fiddling with your change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Choking yeah. the bishop, flogging the dolphin, you know, <laughs> getting getting at it, you know. Mm-hmm. Each, uh, each pack includes a random selection of cookies that feature classic characters like Pikachu, and Charmander, but also one extremely rare Pokemon, the mythical Mew. Mm. And it has long been the case with rare Pokemon cards. The rarest Pokemon cookie has become a hot commodity. Of course it has. Here's here's a fun hot take that you guys in the room may not know, and I know a lot of listeners don't know. I hate Pokemon. Oh, really? I have my entire life, actually. I remember very, very vividly in the fourth or fifth grade i had one good friend his name was david mcfarland because we were the only two in the entire fucking school that thought pokemon was stupid so we had recess time they bring out their dumb little fucking cards and mm-hmm. they'd be doing their stupid fucking thing mm-hmm. and we'd go That's a lot of hate have <laughs> proper proper conversations about oh. real goddamn things <clears throat> that actually mean something. So th- for the record, this is another reason Grant is better than the rest of us. Yes. Well, and David McFarlane, yeah. Okay, sure. We'll, we'll <laughs> so for the record, um, never got into Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, sorry, I almost said Yu-Gi-Oh. No, um, yeah, that's uh, also fucking stupid. Jeez, man, just the amount of like, hate. Just, anyway. Let's not define ourselves based off the things we hate. Let's define ourselves from the things we love. We're not talking about red mulch here. <laughs> <laughs> now, red mulch. Fucking blasphemous. Get it out of here. This is not a Wendy's. Um, but but seriously, as far I never got into Pokemon. Um, it, uh, it just, like, we spent a whole bunch of time overseas, and then when I came back, there was this fucking huge thing, which yeah. was Pokemon. Did not understand it. I did. I came back when uh, the third book of Harry Potter, you know, okay, had, just, yeah. had just been released, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. and that definitely went all the way in on Harry Potter. Let me some Harry yeah. Potter it's, now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Love that stuff Harry was Potter. great, but yeah. but just was not. In, I didn't understand Pokemon. It seemed to, to be a whole bunch of different things going on. Um, I, I know that uh, Yu Gi Oh started off as a card game and this television show at the same time, that kind of stuff. But Pokemon is evolves there's there's just too many things to be a part of Mm -hmm. just didn't quite get it yeah and then that stupid fucking pokemon go thing happened and people are you're just pissed off because you ran over a goddamn bulbasaur when he was backing out the other day backing into their friends cars yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember remember well there there's a wonderful example but there was plenty of examples of people like walking into traffic and Mm -hmm. hitting things with their bike Mm -hmm. or Falling into holes on the other people's and trespassing, oh, yes, right up. Yeah. because they downloaded some stupid fucking app on their phone to chase after some creature that has never existed. Yeah, I just I I don't know. I, so I did see the always other day. annoyed me. I don't really know why because I like fantasy. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of creating a fictional universe, but 
Dude, we're talking about like Sonic the Hedgehog style. Oh, yeah. We're talking about like yeah, Hobbit. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Or is, 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 <laughs> when I think of fantasy, I think of wizards and world creation and that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But Pokemon, I, I feel like that just doesn't fall into that category. You I know? agree. It doesn't. But you know, Harry Potter falls into the fantasy. Well, of network. course, which is why I'm baffled that it ever got popular to begin well, with. Well, Pokemon's just taking what about animals that animals yeah. and fantasy animals that actually exist well, in Beanie folklore are, and in reality uh, and just changing their name. I mean, yeah. I kind of understand... Beanie and, Babies are great, though, because you could chuck them at your friends' heads. That's, that's true, but that was also kind of like the rarity and exclusivity thing. Now, on a certain level, I do understand the, the Pokemon draw where it's the... You have to uh, evolve this, this thing you know, into something more. You were leveling right. up this thing mm. and you were kind of competing with it. I understand it. It's it's not for me, but I do understand it at a kind of game level, uh, you know, putting the time in and leveling it up, all that kind of stuff. Right, wasting your time on something stupid. Yeah, sure. I get it. And speaking yeah. of wasting other things, I did see the other day uh, that it was a, it was a, Data is Beautiful on Reddit. Ah, and it had a, a, good a list of the amount of money total made from these different franchises. So so, mm-hmm. so we're not talking about specific versions of it. We're talking about the entire media associated with it. So yeah. uh, Marvel, um, the Sony Spider-Man, you know, uh, series, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. DC stuff, uh, some other things that I did not even know existed because it's just kind of out of my sphere yeah. uh, or part of different parts of the world, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then Pokemon just so far ahead, just billions and billions and billions of really? dollars ahead of everything else. No way. It is by far the most successful uh, media franchise across anything and everything um, as far as, because it's everything. It's it's fucking Oreos. Man, yeah. It's depressing. It's Oreos. Yeah, yeah it's, and I'm not even done with this yet. It's oh, vi- I'm sorry. It's video <laughs> no, ga- oh, no, sorry. It's, it, yeah, it, gets, it gets... <laughs> To yeah. me, to me, continue on. To me, like the, the closest thing to Pokemon that I was involved in was Tamagotchi. Yeah, so it's that thing where you're built. It's its pet thing, and you're building and evolving it and making it something else. And know? I bought a Tamagotchi like four months ago, mm-hmm. like oh. the second gen Tamagotchi that I still haven't pulled the tag out of on the side to make it activate. Because mm-hmm. you and Carolyn aren't ready for a baby. We're yet. not ready yet. I get it. We're not okay. ready. So okay. get ready for cats. Oh, yeah, four of them. Well, yeah, a Tamagotchi is way more difficult to take care of it's than true. a cat. It wakes you up at like 3 o'clock in the fucking morning, oh, and i got to be at work at 5 a lot of times. That's true. Coming up, and I'm like, mm And it'll be one of those like those alarm clocks that like I used to have one as a soccer ball when I was a kid. And we'd go off, and you just throw it across the room. That's how you make it go off. But, but oh, it's, it's a good one for me, but I broke it. So mm. that was not – that was. but an eBay search yields dozens of Mew. Like I said, Mew the – fantastical one you need to get that makes the most money cookies for sale with prices listed everywhere from 50 to ten thousand dollars to one hundred thousand dollars for a fucking oreo cookie one cookie if i was really rich and more vindictive than i am in real in real life i would buy one and then eat it on camera Mm -hmm. that'd be a lot of fun this has got to be like the collectors, you know, the people that I just have to have everything that is Pokemon related. They're literally handing them with tongs. Yeah, fucking losers. Yeah. Like picking oh, individually, like picking them out of the bag individually or out of the container cartridge, if you will, with tongs so, to see if they're broken in any way, shape, form or fashion. They're useless. Oh, clever. But they have to be in mint condition. Question, I don't know if you know, based off the article, but is that package of Oreos, is it a regular-sized package of Oreos? Is is. it a standard retail price Yes, for a package of Oreos? Mm -hmm. And it's just very unlikely for you to find a certain one of these pocket monster-shaped cookies. Pocket monster. I like it better than Pokemon. Um, Mm -hmm. And then they put that for sale online, and some fucking idiot is going to spend way too much money on it. Goddamn cookie. Got it. That's cool. So just, Pocket just Monster clarifying. in my head, it, it's, okay, we took a sleeve of Oreos uh-huh. mm-hmm. and we put it in our pocket and then we started walking around <laughs> like Ron Burgundy. Like, Don't act like you're not impressed. <laughs> I'm thinking more like the, the bass, li- uh, bass player from um, um, Spinal Tap. Yeah. Okay. Remember he's going to the airport yep. and the metal detector goes off and he pulls a cucumber wrapped in aluminum foil out of his pants. 
I don't remember that. Because he's been, stuffing his pants. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> to make it seem like he has a large penis. Yeah, but then because he wrapped he's a, it in tin, Because he's a rock star. He, wrap, he wrapped it in... Jesus. Oh, by the way, t- so funny thing, <laughs> tinfoil, the, uh-huh. here's just a weird fact. Mm-hmm. Um, tinfoil, it was never made out of tin. I know. Not ever. Mm-mm. It was always made out of aluminum foil. Oh, wow. So the whole tinfoil thing was a misnomer as far as residential. I mean, yes, there's like foil that was made out of tin. But the whole idea of tinfoil hats and all these people that right. you know, took foil and then made these hats, out, mm-hmm. it was never made out of tin. It's always been aluminum. It's kind of like how we, uh, as Americans, put gas in our cars. Uh, petrol? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's petroleum. Well, technically we are putting gasoline. Yeah, I guess not, but still. Versus diesel or kerosene. Okay, okay, okay. Or fine. bunker fuel. Mm. B10, B20, or any of the other types of fuels and petroleum products out there. But yes, if you go to the UK, they are not going to call it gasoline. They're going to call it petrol. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, when I went over there, it was... Uh, Gas in my That was uh, during the Bush administration. Which um, one? I think it was the... Uh, <laughs> I know. The no, dumb one. Second. Yeah. Second Bush. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, the second Bush, because I was a baby during the first one. So I wasn't w. playing death metal in the in Europe as a baby with a bass. You know, mm-hmm. that would have been fucking fantastic. Fuck, did I want to see that. Right? Me yeah. too now. It's a different type of baby metal. <laughs> <laughs> baby, the other, other whack. Well, that could be our song for the uh, song of the day of the week. Baby metal? Baby metal. Baby metal. <laughs> You look it up. We're not going to play. You yeah, just look no, it up. No, baby, just look it up. Just search for the highest pitch screaming from babies and the lowest resonance of bass and guitar that you can get. So have fun with that one. Um, so these these uh, some of these people have taken on to just selling packs of cookies mm-hmm. because they don't know what's inside of them, and people are doing the stupid thing of buying them. Um, a few of them have actually sold for twelve hundred dollars for a pack of Oreos right. just to see what's inside. Just go to the grocery store. Oh, <laughs> oh, Billy! Wait, so, are so, dumb. So, so are these are these specially marked on the package? No. Oh, so it's just normal Oreos. I mean, I'm sure that they say like it's a, it's Pokemon a, Extravaganza or something yeah. like mm. that on them, but it's just like, well, I'm just gonna go buy like. 15 packs of these and put them on eBay and just sell them for 1200 a pack Jesus. just for the advance of that. Are you and, saying that there's an Oreo shortage in general right now? Um, no. Is this like McDonald's Szechuan sauce? Because that'd be pretty cool. Okay, man, that, that people sure. are fighting in grocery stores. It actually, store it actually the cookie aisle. fucking Szechuan sauce. <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk <laughs> shit about that, but I've actually tasted um, a replica of Szechuan sauce of the McDonald's Szechuan mm-hmm. sauce. And I got Szechuan chicken like Thursday, not McDonald's bad. shit was way better. I'm not sauce, saying it wasn't good. The sauce I'm was way saying, better. But don't the get hype. in a fight over a goddamn no. condiment. No, no, no. Don't buy a package of cookies no, for no. twelve hundred dollars. No, We're please. T- this is this is just fanaticism. You know, we've we've always got something. I know. You know is, <laughs> people care We're too broken. much about stuff. We're broken. I know. But the strike, however, ended in a union vote last week, according to the Huffington Post. So if you're so inclined, they've uh, they've stopped making them. Okay. Okay. Well, now that makes more sense for them to be ex- as expensive as yeah. they are, because it's a rarity, right? It's a commodity. Yeah, and there were people like um, <sighs> there were people like only. threatening Nabisco employers or employees and stuff. <laughs> Holy shit! No shit. Like <laughs> for the fucking cookies because they <laughs> <Yeah>. see them. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So yeah. All right. Everything's a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. I am unhappy. Me too. That's a good note to leave it on. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think that it. we would get to this one because I thought that the other two would be more of an engagement. But I, I I thought I had to throw the Pokemon Oreos in there because that's that's just asinine. Everybody's so stupid. <laughs> Especially R. Kelly. Fuck him. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, he got he got he likes Oreos. <laughs> he, oh, yeah. <laughs> he got convicted he on his... Uh, they. Basically, had to do a racketeering um, charge against him. Al whatever. Capone. Yeah. Shit. And it, and it stuck. Motherfucker's yeah. going to of jail. Of course, it's still. Long time. Good. He peed on way too many girls to not be in jail. Which makes things sticky. So, yeah. Nice. D- does it? I wouldn't know. I don't know. I've never peed I've, on anybody. I've, I've peed on my sister. Anybody. I mean, I've peed on myself. 
I peed on my sister I because of the, I peed on my sister because of uh, jellyfish. Oh, okay, yeah, it was, uh, I was I was in that and I came back with it. Just Wait, pulled me out of the <laughs> jellyfish. Wait, what? Yeah. what? Well, no, I peed on a jelly, uh, peed on my sister because uh, we were in um, what the fuck is that place in Mississippi? Uh, Meridian. Mm. Mm. Um, Wait, Meridian's or not Meridian? Land, uh, land. B word, B word, Biloxi. But yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Um, we were hanging out down there. Two of my uncles were helping set up um, a couple of the casinos. Um, they're electricians. And we were just down there hanging out on the beach, you know, like shitty looking water. Looks like any lake you've ever been to, but brown. Because um, Mississippi doesn't have much to offer as far as coastal beauty. But um, what are you talking about? Yeah, right. <laughs> Whole state's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Well, it's it's weird to me. It's always Mississippi. It's weird to me because like you have like the middle of Louisiana oh God, or like so the true. little peninsula of Louisiana mm-hmm. to Alabama state line. And as soon as you cross over into Pensacola, the water starts getting blue and you're like, wait a minute. All right. Anyway, but jellyfish wrapped around my sister's leg. Yeah. I'm beating it with one of those foam noodles. Oh, great. Going, get off my character. Release her. Release <laughs> she comes her. running up there like, we don't know what to do. And I'd been watching Discovery Channel the week before, and I was like, I know what to do. Drop trowel, start pissing on her. And they're like, what are you doing? And she was like, actually, don't. It feels, feels better good. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feels better. Meat tenderizer yes. works, too, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Continue yeah. peeing on my leg. Or pee-pee feels nice, too, because if you're at the beach, you got to pee most of the time. Hopefully that didn't turn into a thing. Hey, come here, I got piss on your leg. Would you please pee on me? <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> uncomfortable. <Yeah>. Anyways. <laughs> uh, That's good. Well, that will be the first tweener. Um, hope you guys learned something. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me on. It's fun being on on this yeah. side. You know? No, I want to put you on a, on a real episode at one point too. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess the takeaway would be we'll, from we'll go over topics and then you pick one. This like uh, don't fuck with otters. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, definitely don't fuck. Gorillas with them. love fellatio. They they pleasure them they each do. other and stay the fuck Good away from Pokemon. That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, Pokemon's just fucking stupid. Don't waste your time yeah. on that. You yeah. know what I mean. And honestly, come at me for real. I mean, Fucking come at me. I mean, everybody do what you're gonna do. Enjoy your life, however it is. But we're just saying, like, if you require Pokemon to be happy, maybe reevaluate. Yeah, that's a nice way of saying. Maybe it. But enjoy Pokemon if that's the thing you enjoy doing. But, but maybe, also reevaluate if you require yeah. that to be happy. Maybe be a little smarter. I don't know. Wow. Now there's also and well, and there's, there's also <laughs> this thing out there. There's two things out there that you could also take up, and there's one that's called. Um, crack cocaine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, methamphetamines. Meth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you take those up, you won't worry about the Pokemon, or you'll worry about them so much you'll get a Darwin Award. Yeah, that's a good idea. But also, where's Knitting. more cocaine? <laughs> Where is more cocaine? <laughs> and crack and meth. <laughs> yeah, that's probably going to be the first thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so you won't be worrying about the Pokemon as much. That's true. Yeah. Well, I think that'll wrap us up for today. And um, I mean. This is a quality fucking podcast. Yeah, I mean, only the best. So if you want to hear more about it, then, you know, go on that there dang, anchor.fm backslash friends, facts and fiction. Mm-hmm. Give us some fucking money. Do it. Do it right now. Give me some money and um, do that little five star bullshit. Maybe write a review or email us for once. Ma- email me. If you love Pokemon mm-hmm. and try and defend your case, and you can do that not at fucking stupid friends period facts period fiction at gmail dot com. Hey, there you go. See, you know. Well, okay. I guess uh, I'm Grant Bramlett, and uh, everybody out there, if you like Pokemon, I never liked you. And I'm Drew Shelnut. I'm saying uh, <laughs> just piss on an otter and see what it does. <laughs> I feel like you're inviting a lot of otter hate if you want to do that. But I mean, just curious. Let's find out. Yeah. Hey, yeah, if you do that, send something in. Let us know what you find. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, actually, um, um, I just saw, uh, this is way off topic, but I just saw a, a new trailer for um, the new Carnage movie, Venom, Carnage. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks 
pretty fucking great because it's got Woody Harrelson playing Carnage and um, Tom Hardy playing it. Venom. Yeah. Okay. It looks pretty fucking great. It's coming out this Thursday. So by the time this episode is released, if you have seen it, it's only released in theaters. Mm-hmm. Please email us and let us know what you think about it. Yeah. There we yeah. go. I'm definitely ex- it, there's certain things that I'm just going to watch mm-hmm. no matter what. Carnage is definitely going to be, you know, one of those things. I need the Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely want to see that uh, Ryan Reynolds free guy, you know, thing. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I haven't seen um, it either. Yeah, it looks yeah. good. Uh, but there's, I will never watch trailers because trailers ruin this everything. One, this one was a bunch of not um, storylines as much as just action shots. I know, but... The, I, I no, know. but I mean, yeah, it, but it, it, looked like, it looked like a Michael Bay, like, just action shots all over the place. So I was just like... Oh, uh, that kind of looks fucking pretty great, though. I know. Like, it looks great, but it, it's all stuff that you don't think matters. And then you start watching the movie, and then in the back of your mind, you start putting to, piecing together all the things that you saw, and you're like, damn it, now I know, I know what's... So yep, if you're making gonna... trailers out there, do better. Yeah, don't fucking ruin it for the rest of us. Just do fucking better. Now, some like, of the show stuff... a name, like, Venom. <sighs> Carnage. <sighs> People fighting. Ooh. That's all you need. That's all you need. In the streets of New York, yeah, there it. was. A de- <sighs> I'm leaving it at that. I like that need. idea for like uh, one of those types of movies. It's like, you know, this comic book that you probably never read. Well, here's a very expensive movie about it <laughs> that everyone will watch. And it'll be it's great. great. Well, so, Jeremy, have a little sign off. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, Jeremy Mulder. There he is. I enjoyed being here. Yeah, he did. And uh, so long. And thanks for all the fish. <laughs> nice. I like That's it. great. Yeah. Well, a little shout out to uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, Douglas Adams. Uh, sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just so you can know, and you can go out there and better yourself. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, very very funny. Mm-hmm. Yes, great book by Douglas Adams. It actually I think started off as a uh, radio serial it was a series of short stories that got turned into a radio oh, okay. uh, serial and yeah. then that got transcribed and written down and then reworked into a full novel mm-hmm. and, and then bilbo into, baggins came in and did the movie and they made into a mm-hmm. super old mm-hmm. uh, bbc uh, series that's horribly great i love it actually it's really good and then bilbo baggins uh, yeah. made one mm-hmm. and then there was i think a decent. newer one right Mm-mm. No, that's no, all no, that's done. the one with Bilbo that's, Baggins. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's all they've done. No, that was yeah. just The Hobbit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> trilogy. Wait, what were we talking about? Hitchhiker's Guide to the <laughs> yeah. Third World. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, which thing? Which thing can we talk about? All right. Well, this is a podcast called Friends, Facts, and Fiction. And we, we out! out! Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next installment. Find us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all things Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Our Instagram handle is Friends underscore Facts underscore Fiction. As always, please reach out to us. You can send any of your questions, praise, and fact-checking to Friends period Facts period Fiction at gmail.com. It's important to us to only propagate the truth, and we'll correct any errors we may have made. Your hosts and researchers are... Justin Hammonds, Grant Bramlett, and Drew Shellnut. Our episodes are produced by Grant Bramlett. Additional producership provided by Grace Higgs. Our recording engineer is Grant Bramlett. Our editor, mix, and mastering audio engineer is Jeremy Mulder. Lighting design is provided by Justin Hammonds. Our office assistants are Gully and Bull. Our research assistants are Under and Paid. Our current interns are Lost and and questionable. Our personal drivers are Idlist and Tired. And our resident pooches are Pack and Jolene. The Devil Child. This has been a production of Friends, Facts, and Fiction. Stuff and things. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
not riding in the car, <laughs> sleeping in a bathtub. <laughs> backyard. <laughs> backyard. Uh, falling down steps. <laughs> it's comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's something else that Justin says? Hold on, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, my guy. Oh, my guy. My, my guy. Yeah, my guy. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We love you. <laughs> love you, Justin. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>